class, uh, Brotherly Love, Ms. Kiki Palmer, Mr. Eric Eric Hill Jr. Yes. And Corey Hardrick. And Julito McCullough. And Julito McCullough. And Malika McCullough. Right. So can we just get a general overview of the storyline? I know yeah. it's really um, convoluted in a lot of different dynamics in terms of family. Yeah. And ambition it seems to be a, a mm. major theme in this story. Brotherly Love can be, in a lot of ways, seen as a bit of an ensemble. Uh, mm. It centers around three siblings of the Taylor family, myself, Eric, Corey. Corey is like the patriarch of the family. He kind of keeps everything in line. He's the reason why we're kind of able to be free and not be as involved with the uh, negativity in our environment. Mm -hmm. My character, she's just kind of the, she's been the princess of the family. And now it's not so much she's ready to not be the princess, but she's ready to identify with what that really means. And if that has to be who she is for all her life. Mm -hmm. And then as far as Eric's character, he's like, you know, I love basketball. I want to play basketball. But in the eyes of where I'm from, this isn't as helpful as, it, as, as um, I think it should be. So he's kind of going through this back and forth thing of right and wrong. What What is that? Or mm -hmm. what is doing it, it to just be type of vibe. And then we all coming together and, as one, figuring out what the consequences uh, you know, will be of our choices. Right. Mm -hmm. How much of the environment played a played a part to the character development? I know that it's going on in Philadelphia, brotherly love. Yeah. But how much of like the inner city conflict wasn't was shown in the film itself? It's I mean it's one of the key it's that's one of the key factors that helps drive the movie. I mean part of the part of the, the arc of the story. Uh, actually we can't have the arc of the story without that uh, element being there. And that was one of the key things that Jamal wanted to make sure Jamal Hill, the director, writer and director of this film. Um, he wanted to make sure that he implemented that, you know, and he does it beautifully. It's amazing because we got a lot of great feedback from people who are in Philadelphia who are like, oh my goodness, this is, this is exactly what we went through. Do you know what I'm saying? And it was also great uh, shooting on location. Mm -hmm. You know, that really helped the vibe, you know, mm -hmm. Overbrook High School, which is the school at which, you know, we attend. When I watched the we movie, especially, I look back at Hilito. You know, Hilito's from New York, but he really did. I was like, dang, he could be somebody in Philadelphia. <laughs> Corey and him, I feel like they were really a part of what it is you're, you're talking about, that in, that part of the movie, that uh, mm -hmm. kind of um, environmental aspect. They really lived that in the, if that part. Yeah, of you couldn't shoot this film nowhere else but Philly. Right. I mean, from the war, from how you look, from how you talk, the haircuts there, you're going <laughs> right, to see right, everything right. was on point. But, and, I mean, and, and being in Philadelphia shooting it helps because the kids, they're excited about it, so they're going to want to sit and talk with us and help us to mm -hmm. portray. Because yeah. we, none of us are from Philadelphia, but if you watch the film, you couldn't tell. No, because yeah. Because we all had so much help from the city itself. Yeah. And, we, and as you can see, both yeah. of them are very handsome, but when you watch the film, Y'all definitely got that gut of eye. <laughs> Y'all got that gut of eye. Yeah. So, Julito, where does your character come in with this sibling? My character is the uh, protagonist of the film. Mm -hmm. He's the one that Corey's character is butting head, heads with throughout the film. And um, Corey is uh, the, the leader of his crew down on the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's big, they got the bottom and the, uh, the hill. That's what the, the uh, different spectrums of the Philadelphia streets are called. And he runs the bottom, and I'm, I'm, up, I'm up at the hill. And um, we butt heads. And his, he has to make his life choices on what, what's going to happen between my character and also keeping his family safe and keeping him positive. But he still has his life he lives. Mm -hmm. And my character's um, you know, trying, to, trying, to, trying to stop him. So. And Corey, how hard was that dichotomy, you know, wrestling between being the patriarch of your family, raising your, being the man of the household for your siblings, and going to get butting head with your mother? I saw some conflict in the trailer between yeah. the mother, Macy Gray. Mm -hmm. um, how was that, like, doing, um, internalizing that character of, like, I have to be responsible for my siblings, but also have this life I lead outside the home? Uh, it wasn't, well, it wasn't hard because I've, I've been on my own since I've been 17. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like art, like they say, real life. And art imitates, you know, real life. Art imitates whatever. But it's just like I took what, what happens in my real life into the movie. You know, like that same responsibility of like survival, you know, um, just that whole nurturing thing of my siblings, you know, because I took care, you know, like my two younger brothers in like real life, you know, and I lost my mom. So um, it was it was an easy transition, but it was still like, it was, it was, um, let me see. Philly and Chicago is kind of like the same. It's just the language is different. I mean, like the inner cities are all, they're all the same. New York, you know, so it's kind of like, you didn't see one hood, you didn't see them all, you know what I'm saying? So that's... I even see a bit of like a synchronism of like you all and your like when he talks you all turn your head towards so you feel like you have a sibling bond now do you establish that we have the utmost respect for each other I think we yeah. all really just really respect yeah. each other so much and, and, and really 
are proud of one another's performances. Like, I can look at the film, and after the film, I'll find something new I love that Eric did. I find something new that Corey did. I find something new that Juanito did. And, and we're not afraid to compliment one another in that. It's really, truly, like, you know, that brotherly love. It's, there was no, uh, it's not a coincidence that we all ended up in the film together. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, as, and as friends outside of work, we're all fans of each other, yes. I think, as well. I am. Just to watch, you know, to watch Corey with American Sniper, and just to keep watching Kiki. I, every time I see her in work, I say, where can she go from, from here? And she just always manages to top that. And I, me and Kiki worked together on our first project yes. ever. Mm -hmm. well, not ever, but the first our, big yeah, our yeah. first big role. And to see her from the old cat to, you know, brotherly love. is, And even Eric, man, he, me and Eric have the same uh, agency. We were the same management Manager. company. And, um, <laughs> Just to see this be his breakout, you yes. know, his breakout role, he, and really he did kills it, yeah. his role. So I, we're fans of each other's works as well. So when you're fans, friends, and then you know peers, it, it just works out. Yes. What did you put? So um, I know you say you play basketball in the film. Um, can you, are you really good now? Or how how was the um, training for that role? Uh. Really good? <laughs> yeah. You can't see Big Brother June. Nah. <laughs> well, we'll find out about that. But um, but no, I uh, I didn't necessarily have to have to train for it because I did play basketball in high school. Growing up in New York City, I mean, when you go to public school in New York City, gym consists of the girls on one side and a basketball thrown into the middle for the guys. So you know, you grow up playing the playing the sport whether you want to or not. And uh, when it came down to do this film, it was really just about making sure that I was in shape physically, you know, for the cardio because, you know, you never know how long you're going to be running up and down uh, for the purposes of continuity for the mm -hmm. film. So that was really what it came down to. Right. And Kiki, you say your character was more like a princess of the family now. Yeah. Now is she more like Cookie of the Empire, like that kind of princess? <laughs> <laughs> She's very, very much so the, the, what you would consider maybe like the typical princess. You know, mm -hmm. you, like what he was saying uh, in the sense of you, you've seen one hood, you've seen them all. I think, you know, there are a lot of different roles that people play in their lives. And she got very comfortable in the role of, you know, my brother does this, my other brother does that, but, you know, I'm just I'm just Jackie. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? She That not not having anything to identify herself with, I think, is what her journey is all about in the film. It's like people see her as just June's sister. You know what I mean? And and, and I think she she's ready to be more than that. So I know, again, we talk about... Ambition being a major theme in this yeah. film, and how, how does each character find themselves in ambition? You know, you say your character is your identity, but how how so is um identity, well identity and ambition tied together? I think love, you know, for Jackie's storyline, love is what lets her live in the moment and realize that her dreams are possible. I think everybody goes in real life through that through that moment when they're able to experience genuine a genuine moment of love when they're just in the moment with somebody and, and through her relationship with another character in the film I think that's what she realizes there's more to her life than just that you know that experience of that moment of love and what it could be is what pushes her to be ambitious to realize you know I do have a purpose I, there's something that I can do hmm. yeah my ambition is to take in my family by any means you know protect my sister you know my brother mm -hmm. so it's kind of like I'm in the streets but it's like I'm doing it Cause I have to, you know what I'm saying. But it's just like, um, you know, my mom's sick. I got to be the provider. So that's my ambition: money, power, respect. Yeah. You know. I think for um, for Serge, you know, he's the number one prospect in the nation. Uh, it takes a lot to have to, you know, put in the work uh, to to accomplish, and it's extremely competitive. You know, once once you're at the level where you're ranked nationally, now it comes down to you know maintaining that level of hype so that you can, you know, not only get into a solid college, but, you know, hopefully maintain that and increase your draft stock. So, you know, his main purpose is on staying focused and in school, and that's where June comes in because he had to sideline his hoop dreams, and he's the reason why Sergio is as ambitious. I mean, when Sergio has moments where he is even doubting himself, you know, he's got his brother there. He's the patriarch, you know. So, you know, my ambition really comes from the family, mm -hmm. you know. My ambition is just to ruin your life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so deeply. That's deep. just my ambition. I mean, I, but we have so many crams. That's my character's name. We have so many crams in our neighborhoods, <laughs> you know, which is unfortunate. And it, but it shows that you have people that's strong enough to overcome the crams in our relate and in in our you know in our environments. And me as an actor, I love taking on those type of roles. I mean, you know, you know my career. I love the 
the bad guy of the films because that's not me at all in my I know. real life. I know there's, it. There's it could, a whole I mean, it lot could not be there. any more. Yeah. He couldn't be any more <laughs> not. He's like so sweet. That's so interesting. <coughs> that's so interesting. <coughs> that, that, that's why you see yeah, him. I, I just, I don't know. It's just something about. Even when we were younger, you all see him turn up. Turning up, that's fun. That's different. But then, even when we were younger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first movie we exactly, did, that character cat. was was yeah. misunderstood. Misunderstood you know? because these characters are misunderstood, and it gives them some type of humanity. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. I think that's so important. I know. Um, when I'm hearing about this storyline, I think about my own family. I'm the eldest of three. And I have a little sister right underneath me, and I have a little brother who plays basketball. Wow. When I hear this archetype, I'm just like, wow, this is the humanness yeah. in this yeah. story. And, and if somebody tries to, you know, mm-hmm. do something to jeopardize them, you lose mm-hmm. mass. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line. But <laughs> I don't whoop ass. See, I don't whoop ass, I kill people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the ass. That's, 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 that's the reason why I love that's it so much. Company. Because wow. here you are working uh, to the best of your ability doing what comes naturally to you right. to help provide for your family and make sure that that's going to be what's going to secure your family. And that's what June is doing. June is doing what he knows best to right. secure and, yeah. and protect his family. And that's why I love it because you can identify with June even mm-hmm. though you two live completely different lifestyles. And that's why I'm super excited for the people core to see of the film. Is the same. We want people exactly. to leave the theater saying, I, I was able, it's so, the ensemble is ridiculous. Everybody and their moms in this movie. But we want somebody <laughs> to say, I could relate to Jackie. Mm-hmm. I could relate to June. Well, I got somebody in my family, like, mm-hmm. right. you know, yeah. right. Serge, Jackie. Everybody got, you know. Yeah. It's, 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 I just say like, thank you all for making this project, oh, making no. this story. Oh, my gosh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I mean, this thank really you. wouldn't have so happened happy. without Jamal and Queen Latifah and Flavor Unit. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the reason. Uh, Jamal Hill wrote and directed this film. It's his, as you know, as he likes to say, it's his baby. It's mm-hmm. his brainchild. And Queen Latifah had the foresight to know uh, how, just how, how exactly. Exactly, that this film was necessary. So basically, they put the money together and made it happen. <laughs> exactly. And now we're here, and uh, we made some beautiful art. Joe Scott. It's for our generation, man. This is our film for the now. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm looking directly. No, yes. I'm sorry, brother. You're looking directly. Just saying, hopefully, in the next 15, 20 years, we're looking back on brotherly love, saying this was, this was for the moment. Yes. For the moment. Yes. And hopefully, everybody understands that and feels that. Go see it. Support. It's the grassroots, you know. We're trying to build it up. Right? April 24th is when you can see it your first time.